Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at four pens. It's not going to be a review of the pens, it's going to be a review of the nibs. All these have got 1.1 stub nibs. So I've got a Kareko Sport, a Retro 51, a Twisby Eco, and a Leonardo Ferrari. What we'll do, we'll take a look at the nibs, We'll focus more on the way they write, on how they perform on paper, then I'll give you my thoughts on them. Here we are down on the mat. Let's take a quick look at the pens we're going to use. All of these have got 1.1 stub nibs. The first one, this is a Caveco Sport and the nib is made by Bock. The second, a Twisby Eco with a nib made by Yoho. The third is a Retro 51 Tornado, again with a Yoho nib. And then the fourth one, this is a Leonardo Ferrari, also with a Yoho nib. Let's get straight in and we'll start with the Caveco Sport. We're not going to spend any time looking at the pens because today's video is all about the nibs. So if we take a look at the nib here, it's a fairly small nib. I think it's a number five size nib or very similar to that. 1.1 stub nib, you can see there the stub on the end. Nice pen, nice pocket pen, really works well. So we've got here a Caveco Sport. This has got 1.1 and it's Bock. The pen itself 34 Australian dollars. The ink, this is by Dominant Industry. And it's a Lungo. I love the colour of this ink and I think it looks really nice in this pen. Drying times, that's immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds almost try right, 30 seconds for completion one minute after a minute there we go that one is nice and dry I'm going to move the mic and write a sentence That's nice, nice and smooth. There's no catching on the paper. I'm not going to say it glides, I can feel it writing. It's looking for line variation. So here goes a line down and the line across. So you see big difference there between the downstroke and the cross stroke. And then I'll do some S's. Quite an enjoyable pen to write with. You know, it's a pocket pen, it is fairly short. You expect that. Love that I see all this shading coming through with the ink. Got lots of different colour variation. And to me, and one of the things I want to look at with these 1.1 stubs today, just look at the character that having that different line width fetches out in my writing. Really like this. I'm going to take off the cap. What we're going to do is fetch in the next pen, which is the Twisby Eco, and compare the two nibs. So the Twisby Eco, that is a number five Yoho nib. Just look at that in comparison to that Bok nib. So whereas before I thought maybe this was a number five nib, definitely looks smaller, doesn't it? Let's get the Sport out of the way. Almost had an accident there with the Twisby rolling off the table. So Twisby Eco said, nice, I like the Eco pens. We're not going to spend too much time looking at the pens. We're going to get straight into writing. So we've got here a Twisby Eco. Again, this is 1.1. This time it's Joho. I'm never sure how to pronounce that word. Cost-wise, we're looking at 45 Australian dollars. 
the ink is by Pilot and it's Ira Shizuku. Shinryaku. One of the first inks I actually bought when I got back into the fountain pen hobby. I like this, it's a nice deep green colour. Drying times. Here's a media. A lot wetter looking. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. One minute. After a minute, and again, we're nice and dry now. Whilst I was off camera, I did fix the spelling of that Ryoku. Let's move the mic and write a sentence. And let's look at our lines. Here we've got a lot of wetter combination. Not seeing any shading at all. So it's just like a flat colour that's coming out of this. I'm seeing some nice line variation. And to my eye, it looks like the line that I'm getting from this 1.1 stub is actually wider than I'm getting from the Cavicola Sport. What I'll do is I'll take a closer look at the lines at the end of the video. So this is the Twisby Eco. There we go. Let's take that off. Hopefully this will stay still. There's a problem with these round barrels. They tend to roll a lot. And I'm going to fetch in the next pen. This is a Retro 51 Tornado. This is in the antique copper. I really I like this. Could you try again? Siri wants to know what I said. Well, Siri can keep waiting. So let me put these alongside each other. So we're staying with Joho nibs, but we've now moved up to a number six size nib. Look at the size difference there. I'm not sure which I prefer. I mean, the, the Twisby Eco, the nib looks nice and sleek, but you can certainly see what you've got here with this Retro 51. Let's pop the Twisby Eco away. Move this paper up ever so slightly. And here we've got... One sec. So retro... I'm not sure I understand. Don't you hate technology? Right, Retro 51 Tornado. I'm hoping that I've got Siri turned off now. Again, 1.1. Your her nib. Price for this, I paid 105, 105 Australian dollars. The ink by Diamine. And it's ancient copper. I mean, what else can you put in a copper pen than a copper ink? Drying times. 10 seconds. 30 seconds, one minute. After a minute, again, we're nice and dry. We'll move the mic and do our sentence. And again, let's look at the lines. So this pen, the writing experience is very different than what I was seeing with the Eco. With the Eco, it was nice, it was soft. There was a bounce to it. But once I've moved into this Tornado, the nib, it feels stiff. 
and it feels as if I'm dragging it over the paper. There's a lot of feedback there. It's very scratchy compared to the Twisby Eco, which was, I've got to be honest, an awful lot smoother. When I look at the line, the line here seems to be an awful lot thinner than what I'm seeing from that Twisby Eco. Again, we'll look at them towards the end of the video. I am seeing a lot of shading coming through, which is nice to see. And right there on the bottom of the P, we are seeing some of that copper shimmer that's in there as well, which all just adds to the really the character, doesn't it? But there's not a lot of that shimmer coming through. Now, I had been agitating this pen before I started writing with it to give that shimmer the best chance of coming through. Let's take a look at the nib one more time. Another one which wants to roll away on me. And now I'll fetch in my final pen, which is the Leonardo Ferrari. Also with a Yoho nib. Let's take a look at these next to each other. So the nibs, you can see very, very similar. Obviously the engraving on both is different because they're both branded. But both of these nibs made by Yoho. With the Leonardo, I haven't been 100% able to confirm that it's Yoho. I'm just going by a number of articles that I've seen on the internet. Whereas with all the other pens, I've been able to confirm who the nib manufacturer is. So let's get that Retro 51 out of the way and then we'll do some writing. So we've got the Leonardo Ferrari. Again, 1.1 and I'm going to call it Yoho because from my investigation, that's the nearest I've found. This is by far the most expensive pen, 230 Australian dollars. The ink is by Diamine. And it's Earl Grey. Now, in one of my previous videos where I've been using this pen, someone suggested a grey ink. This is the grey ink that I've got. So I thought I'd give this a try. Yes, it goes quite nice, doesn't it, with this salt white body. But I've got to be honest, I'm not certain it's a match that I enjoy. I mean, I'll use up the fill, but I don't think I'll be using grey in here again. Drying times. So immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. You know, it's more or less dry there. One minute. After a minute, that, that's nice and dry, but it was no, more or less there, wasn't it, at the 30 second mark. Just going to move the paper up slightly and I'll move the mic and do my sentence. And let's look at the lines. So we go down and then we go across. So with this one, again, I'm seeing a lot of shading coming through. I actually do quite like the old gray ink. I think it's a nice gray and the other pens I've had in it really performed well. The line, again, comparable really with the Retro 51. But saying that they're virtually the same nib you can see that the leonardo they paid more attention to the nib it's tuned so much nicer it's smooth there's no catching on the paper i'm not going to say it's gliding over the paper but you can definitely feel that they've spent the time to make sure it writes well again i'm just going to move this paper up i'm going to do one final test with each of the pens so i'm going to start here with the caveca what i'm going to do i'm going to do three lines down below that I'm going to do three cross lines. Now with the twist beat. Three down. Three across. Retro 51. Do the same thing. I don't know if you can hear the Retro 51 there. It actually feels like and it sounds like it's tearing the paper. And then finally that Leonardo Ferrari. 
why I've done this is just so we can see a difference in the line widths between each of them. And you can see here, certainly, as I said earlier, with that Twisby, far wider line. I would say the next in width would be a tie between the Vehicle Sport and the Leonardo. And to my eye, that Retro 51 Tornado looks like it's the narrowest line. And of the three, it's the one that I least enjoy using. Now, I've only had this pen a few weeks. So what I need to do now is really spend a little bit of time with some micro mesh. I think I can smooth most of these issues out. But part of me thinks when you're paying $105 for a pen, don't you expect it to work out of the box? You don't expect to have to spend so much time working on it. That's the beauty with the Leonardo. You know that they've spent the time. You know that they've tuned that nib. But of the three, I've got to be honest, the one that I quite enjoy, the one I really would use more often, I think, is the Twisby Eco. Here we go with this Shin Ryoku ink. I may not use this ink in here. I think they're very wet together, but I've got some other greens I can try. I mean, I can certainly see, you know, it looks like we've got a fair bit of feathering because it's just such a wet combination. And then the vehicle Sport, I like the 1.1 in here. Yes, it's not as bouncy as I see with the Eco, but it's certainly nowhere near as scratchy as that Retro 51. I like that and I think I may start carrying this around in my pocket instead of my other Kaveco Sport which has got a broad nib because I've got to be honest I think I prefer the line this has given me. So this is my thoughts on four different 1.1 stub nibs. So a 1.1 Bot nib in a Kaveco Sport, a 1.1 Yoho number 5 nib in a Twisby EK, a 1.1 your her number six nib in the retro 51 tornado and a 1.1 your her number six nib in a leonardo ferrari i hope you've enjoyed today's video have you got any 1.1 stub nibs do you find that they behave differently in different pens i mean certainly i've been interested with the results i've been getting for this test please drop a comment down below let's kick start the conversation Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.